There are many ways to increase your survivability in Terraria, whether that be with extreme mobility, high dodge chance, or instant regen. And while all of these are great in their own ways, we can't be forgetting the obvious choice, just becoming an utter tank. Today, I'm going to be showing you the absolute best defense and damage reduction setup that can quite literally face tank expert Moonlord or any other bosses in the game. Also, what makes this so good is the fact it's entirely obtainable pre-Moonlord, making it a viable strategy for beating the game. Before we jump into it, however, if you enjoy content like this, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Alrighty, let us begin. Before anything else, let's establish exactly what armor you should be using, and surprisingly, while it is very close with pure beetle armor, I found a combination of Hallowed, Beetle and Valhalla to be the best. To get your Hallowed Mask, simply just collect 12 Hallowed Bars from a mech boss. For the Beetle Shell, you'll need to first craft a Turtle Scale Mill with a Turtle Shell and 24 Chlorophyte Bars, and then combine it with 8 Beetle Husks dropped from Golem. And finally, for your Valhalla Knight's Greaves, you'll need to buy that from your Tavern Keep with 50 Defender Medals. With all this crafted together at an anvil, you should be left with a nice base defense of a whopping 80, which is actually higher than a full set of Solar. And the best part is, this is only the beginning, because it's about to get a lot crazier. Moving on to accessories, you'll basically need to collect multiple of the same components, because this setup revolves around stacking Tinkers together. But before we get on to that, let's get the only unique accessory dealt with first. Yep, you guessed it, the Worm Scarf. This beautiful 17% damage reduction will go a long way, and is dead easy to obtain at this point in the game, even if that means you have to make a new world. Now, time for some actual grinding. Heading over to the Crimson again, we'll need to get ourselves three Flesh Knuckles, which are dropped from Crimson Mimics. The best way to farm these is by simply just getting a load of Souls of Night and summoning them by placing the key in a chest in a Crimson Wild. Once you've got your three Knuckles, hang on to them, as we'll also need to head to your dungeon and farm three Paladin Shields. And while this may seem awful on paper, in areas backed by a brick wall, I found them surprisingly common. And with the shield only having a drop rate of 13.56%, it only took me about half an hour to get all three. Right, we're almost there. You'll next want to head to your underground ice biome and get a frozen turtle shell, which, for me, was unironically the most painfully slow part of this whole process, and took me about an hour thanks to its 2% drop rate. When you're done, head to your Tinker's Workshop and get combining. You'll basically want to turn your Knuckles into a Berserker Glove, which you'll also need a Power Glove for, by the way, and your Paladin Shield into the Heroes and Ice Shield. With all these in hand, get them all reforged to warding and enjoy being an absolute tank. And while this as a base is brilliant, making Biomimics deal 30 damage a hit, we can make it truly broken with a simple box setup. Make sure you've got all the usual heart lanterns, bast statues, etc, and then add a few statues for heart and weak enemy spawns. This will be your main source of regeneration during the fight, ensuring that even if your health gets low, you'll always bounce back. Additionally, make sure you've got some liquid in there for the fish from mount, as this can seriously buff your offensive stats for no extra cost. And speaking of stats, the final icing on the cake are potions. The truly guarantee victory, consume endurance, life force, iron skin, heart reach, and a major improvement food before the fight. And with this, you're ready to go. As long as you've got a weapon that's capable of hitting the Moonlord, you can take as long as you like. In my experience, I found the solar eruption to be the best. And well, the Moonlord didn't stand a chance. I think the craziest part is, with a number of other obscure additions, we can get our defense over 200. But if I'm honest, this is all you need, and is easily possible pre Moonlord. Of course, as well, don't forget, if it can tank the Moonlord, it can tank anything else, usually without even needing the box room, making any boss you miss an absolute breeze. If you haven't already, give this setup a go. And of course, if you have any pre Moonlord suggestions that could make it even better, let me know down below. This has been Socrates, and I'll see you in the next one.